The rate of a reaction tells us how much product is formed or how much reactant is used up every second, minute, or hour. To calculate a reaction rate, you need to measure how much the mass or concentration of a reactant or product changes over time. In most cases, the change in concentration is measured and divided by the time taken for this change to occur. For example, if a reaction has the equation A plus B reacts to make C, then the rate of the reaction can be found in three different ways. One, by taking the change in concentration of product C divided by change in time. Two, by taking the decreasing change in the concentration of A divided by the change in time, where the negative represents the consumption of reactant A. Or three, taking the decrease in the change of concentration of B and divided by the change in time. The rate of a reaction will have the units of concentration per time. Typical units would be molarity, or moles per decimeter cubed, per second, or molarity per hour. The rate of a reaction does not usually stay the same as the reaction runs. As the reactants are used up, there are fewer reactant molecules to continue to collide and form additional product, so the reactant rate decreases. The change in reaction rate depends on the mechanism of the reaction. How do we measure reaction rate in solution? We need a method for measuring the concentration of a reactant or product. If a gas is produced and released from the solution, the change in mass can be measured using a balance. If one of the compounds in the reaction is colored or UV absorbing, the absorbance can be measured using a UV vis spectrometer or colorimeter. The change in absorbance is proportional to the change in concentration, which we could see with the Beer-Lambert law. Molarity is measured as moles of solute per decimeter cubed of solution. If we're trying to find the molarity of a product created, of which we only know its mass, we would need to take the mass of product, divide it by its molar mass, and then divide this by the volume of solution to find concentration. We will also need to think about stoichiometry. For example, if the reaction equation is 2A goes to B, then 2 moles of A will be used for every mole of B produced so the rate of reaction of A is typically two times the rate of production of B. There are a few methods to indirectly measure the changes in concentration. If, for example, we are monitoring parameters such as absorbance, we will need to perform a calibration experiment. The absorbance is measured for several solutions of known concentrations to produce a calibration plot, which can then be used to convert absorbance values to concentration values and determine the unknown concentration of a solution. Other possibilities that aren't mentioned in the IB syllabus but can be useful to know are that if we are measuring a compound that is an acid or a base, its pH can be measured using a pH meter, which can then be used to find the concentration of hydrogen ions. Or, if ions are formed or used up in the reaction, the change in conductivity can be measured using a conductivity meter. A third example, is that the reactants and products contain hydrogen atoms, the concentrations can be calculated using the proton NMR signal intensities. Or, if the reactant and product contains a polar bond, its concentration can sometimes be calculated using the infrared, or IR, signal intensities. If the reaction involves gases, the reaction rate can be measured by monitoring the pressure or volume of the gas. The key equation here is the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT where pressure times volume equals moles times the gas constant R times temperature. If volume is constant, meaning the gas is collected in a sealed, rigid container, and the gas is cooled and heated to maintain temperature, then the change in pressure is proportional to the change in the number of moles. For example, if the number of gas molecules is doubled, the pressure inside of the container will have also doubled. Pressure can be kept constant by collecting gas in a syringe, where the plunger moves outwards so that the gas remains at atmospheric pressure as the volume continues to increase. In this setup, the change in moles is proportional to the change in volume, with temperature and pressure held constant. The concentration of a gas can then be found by solving the ideal gas law for moles divided by volume. This gives N over V equal to pressure divided by the gas constant times temperature. In any case, the concentration of reactant and product can be plotted against time. If the resulting graph is a straight line, any two points in the line can be used to measure the reaction rate. 
The reaction rate is equal to the gradient or the slope of the line that's created, which is found by taking the change in concentration divided by the change in time. Most concentration time graphs are not a straight line, as the rate of reaction decreases as the reactant is used up. To measure the rate of reaction at any particular time, a tangent line is drawn to the curve. The reaction rate would then be the gradient of the tangent. Reaction rates depend on many factors. Reactant concentrations, temperatures, catalysts, even solvent properties such as polarity and pH. Many of these complexities are not mentioned in the SL syllabus, but thinking about these concepts may help you interpret concentration versus time graphs and better understand how the rate of reaction is measured and changes as the reaction takes place.